In this video, we are going to walk through the FI service integration with APEC and the configuration steps on how to deploy a two-arm service graph. We log into the APIC. We already have a logical device cluster defined. The name of this is F5 device. And it is in stable state and ready to be used. We are going to first create a service graph template, which is going to be a one node two arm. We provide a name to the service graph template. We specify the number of nodes as one, and we choose a single node ADC in two arm mode. We define or choose a service function, and we define choose a profile, which would be a function profile that we have predefined. In order to use dynamic attach endpoint, we go to the internal interface and enable the attach notification. Now we are going to apply the service graph template. Here we specify the consumer endpoint group, the provider endpoint group, and the contract that we would like to use. In this case, we are going to create a new contract. Here we select the logical device cluster, which is FI device, click on parameters, since we used a function profile, we have a lot of information already predefined. If any field needs to be changed, double click on the field and update it. So here we are updating the internal as well as the external self IPs. We are also going to edit the listener, which is the virtual IP information. This is the pool member setting. And if we go uh, on top, we see that since we are using dynamic endpoint attach, the pool type to be used is dynamic. We click finish, we can go to the deploy graph instances and see that the graph is in applied state. We can log into the APIC and view the debug.logs, and at this point is where the APIC is pushing all the configuration to the F5. To edit some of the parameters after deploying the service graph, we go to the EPG, the provider EPG and click on the L4 to L7 service parameters. Click on the edit sign. Choose the contract name, the graph name, and the node. Click on all parameters. And here is where you can edit parameters after deploying a service graph. Next, we log into the big IP to see if the information has been pushed. We see that a partition has been created. If we view the nodes, we see the nodes have been added by dynamic endpoint attach. We see the pool has been created as well as the virtual server. If we go back to the APIC and view if we log back in into the APIC and see the deploy graph instances, keep a note of the VLANs added. If we go to the big IP, we see the same VLANs have been added to the big IP as well. Now let's go to the vCenter configuration to see how dynamic endpoint attach works. We have our servers and we have the pod groups that are pushed to the vCenter. Let's remove the server from this particular pod group. We do the same for the second server. Once we remove it from the pod group, we should see a detached notification sent out to the APIC. 
Once this is sent to the APIC, the nodes are removed from the big IP and the pool becomes in red state, unavailable. If we want to attach the nodes again, we do the similar process as, and assign the servers back to the pod group, which is your provider EPG pod group. We are going to ping the server just to activate these servers so that they send out an attach notification. Once the attach notification is sent, we see the nodes have been added back to the big IP and the pool and the virtual server is in available state again. We then log in back to vCenter to see the pod groups that's assigned to the client. This is the consumer pod group that's been assigned. We also see the pod groups assigned to the big IP. Pod group internal and external. We can HTTP request to the virtual IP and we see that the request is successful. And it is low balance between the two servers. This concludes the walkthrough. Thank you.